from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Red Hat Summit 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in San Francisco for Red Hat Summit 2018. I'm John Furrier, my co-host John Troyer. Next guest is uh, CUBE alumni. I've been on so many times, I can't remember. You got a, I think you're a VIP CUBE alumni. Doug Baylog, general manager, IBM Storage Client Success, and IBM's partners, executive leading the Red Hat relationship. Welcome back to theCUBE, great to it's see you. It's always great to be honored again. I, I think that's a new category you just invented, a VIP alumni yeah, is. On the cube.net site, we actually have badges for uh, CUBE VIPs. Fantastic. VIP. Great to see you. Again, we uh, have a little history. Um, your role at IBM you know, span, of, you've been there for long, a lot of time, you've seen the history. Power has been your wheelhouse. You built that from scratch, an open community with right. the power systems at IBM, but you launched Open Power. Right. An open consortium, very much yep. open source model, and you know that. It's very successful, congratulations on that. Thank you. Now your role with Red Hat, you're the lead executive, you're the guy to call. <laughs> is there any problems or anything, opportunities? Right. What's going on? Give us the update. Yeah, so you know, I think it was mentioned by Matt on stage today where we're actually celebrating 20 years of partnering together with Red Hat, and, and you know, I think a lot of folks take pause at that, not realizing how far back this relationship goes. I mean, I was, I was hate to say I was there in uh, 1998 when we uh, struck this agreement. I think at that time, a lot of folks inside IBM you know, were scratching their heads saying, who's Red Hat and what is Linux and what is it, why are we doing this? And you know, at the end of the day, we have had a long-standing belief in open collaboration, drives innovation, and drives value to clients. And, and that was the fundamental reason we jumped in when it was just an operating system discussion back in the early 2000s, and we, you know, we brought that across at that time, our Intel server base, then our mainframe, and then in 2013, our power platform. We brought our software along as well back then too, running on uh, that, uh, that operating system. Then it became a virtualization discussion and we bought Rev onto the platforms. Our software supported that. And now here with some exciting announcements today around the partnership around cloud with a common container strategy, which I think for enterprise clients will help build a larger ecosystem give clients choice of how they want to bring that value to clients. So it's been a long, deep relationship and one that uh, I think the two companies are uh, more aligned than not in many ways. And you guys are humble, I'll say it. You guys were a catalyst moment. Linux, the Linux coming together at that time became an industry standard literally overnight because the industry rallied around it. Right. You guys supported it with a big contribution and since then, but that was back in the day you know, that was you know, when it was Very early. You know, a tier two citizen in the world. Now, open source is tier one. It's powering everything you see. Open right. source software and storage and networking, software-defined data center, now cloud scale. This is a big deal. It's a big deal. For the world. Now, the cloud strategy is interesting to me. So you got the Red Hat powering a lot of the enterprise. Yep. Hybrid cloud's the number one thing on the agenda. That's Obviously, right. Multi-cloud's kind of being discussed, but that's the end in mind. Yep. Hybrid cloud is the number one work area which is essentially cloudifying, creating cloud operations right. for the enterprise. How does this partner in partnership with Red Hat impact IBM's customers and what's in it for the Red Hat customers? Yeah, I, I think is, and I know you just had Arvind on here a moment ago. It was literally just about six months ago that Arvind and I and uh, Paul Cormier and Jim Whitehurst sat down and said, you know what? I think the next big thing for us to partner around is containers, right? There is so much advantage for speed of software deployment, this uh, hybrid cloud structure you talked about, and the fact that, listen, I think we're much more mature in the industry talking about cloud. There were moments a year or two ago where the answer was, everything's going to the public cloud, you know, on-prem's dead. I think it's a much more mature conversation now in terms of the role of hybrid, which means clients are still going to have plenty of their data, especially if they're a regulated industry. That data is going to stay on-prem, but that still doesn't mean there are parts of their infrastructure, parts of their applications that they're going to want to run in a public cloud, like the IBM cloud. So that ability to have a common container approach, a common container management structure like IBM Cloud Private with OpenShift as the partner, I think it brings tremendous freedom of choice to clients of where they run what with a common development platform. It's interesting, the definition's changed and we're always squinting through the noise, but the bottom line is if everything's cloudified, if you will, using that word, on-prem and public cloud, it doesn't really make a difference where you're located because it's cloud operations. And Wikibon yeah. had the True Private Cloud report, which basically stated that True Private Cloud is essentially on-premise activity, right. just operating in a cloud framework, meaning same code bases, right. more operational dashboards, essentially cloud operations, not traditional IT. Right. So right. I think there is the distinction, so it's still on-prem. 
still on prem. But now you got the edge of the network as well, software based too. Yeah. So you got I IoT edge, public cloud, hybrid, right. all coming together. You know, we used to, uh, when the world was just on prem for the most part, we used to talk about different architectures being fit for purpose, right? What's the right workload to run, you know, what kind of, our, uh, what kind of applications? Um, I was just up with a large uh, financial institution in your neck of the woods on Friday, and we were having this fit for purpose conversation around the cloud. Based on what kind of workload it is, how sensitive is the data, is it redacted of URMI names and social security numbers, right? All that stuff that's important. Where should that, uh, where should that cloud workload run? What cloud should it run in, or should it run on-prem or across both? So, listen, a lot of you know, what's old is always new, but of course it keeps evolving here now to this world of multi-cloud and hybrid cloud, as you said. So what's going on with customers at IBM? Tell us a little bit what's happening in your world. Obviously, the, the industry's replatforming eyes, their, the entire business. It's not just companies, it's an entire infrastructure is changing. Right. Cloud, what do you, you call it? Cloud infrastructure, data infrastructure, AI, you can do stuff, you've seen the power stuff right. being successful. It's a global re-architecture. That's right. This is not about one company. No, this no. This is a complete standard in e the world. Everybody's transforming, and, and you know, I, I don't think there's ever, your, ever an end to transformation. I think transformation is a, a train ride you decide to get on, and you better get on, and you're going to stay on it once you get on, right? And there's milestones along the way that demonstrate progress, but um, there's no resting anymore in terms of being comfortable in today's world. So transformation is going on forever. In the systems business, we're constantly transforming, right? We, we brought out a new mainframe last year, we call it the Z14, and now recently, you know, kind of some of our little skinny Zs, the ZR1s, right, which are really designed for the modern uh, data center because they fit in a standard, an industry standard rack. So we're, we're bringing that robust security to not only our traditional Z clients, but to brand new Z clients running Linux, by the way, right? Yeah, yeah, Arvin, Arvin, was, Arvin nailed it in his description, and I think this is true. You got TCP IP, yeah. HTTP, these are seminal moments, and now you got this glue layer with containers and say right. Kubernetes. This is going to change how software's being built and software being yeah. run, and how businesses will be running. So that's an industry-wide dynamic shift over at the infrastructure level. Right. Instrumentation and all the software behind it. Okay, that's happening. We are, we're agreeing with that and totally agree with that. Now the impact of the customer. Right. What do they have to do? Because they have to now adapt to this new world, which means they got to put the legacy and plugging into the legacy. They have to have microservices. So what does that software defined yeah. <laughs> infrastructure look like for the customer? You've, you've seen the system side, right. through storage. What does software defined mean in this new architecture? Yeah, it's it certainly, I mean, part of the objective of ICP, IBM Cloud Private, was to create that on-prem cloud experience because again, so many clients were looking for not just having their traditional IT, which they're going to continue to have, but continue to modernize, but also move to a new environment that was much more self-service, all the things and the benefits of the public cloud, but still being uh, careful around their data in many ways and their core applications. So they're transforming and modernizing from legacy IT to on-prem IT, and then branching out with the fit-for-purpose discussion to, uh, uh, to the, to the multi-cloud, to the hybrid cloud I, world. I love the, the, the fit-for-purpose, you can fit that in so many parts of the stack, right? Um, we, uh, a lot, I think open source, it, one of its characteristics is it develops in public. Right. And 20 years ago, the, the question was, it, not is it fit for purpose, but like when is Linux going to be ready? Is right. when is it going to be ready? Is it going to yeah. be ready? Well, I think that answer is pretty clear now. And I think the same thing has been going through with, with containers and with Kubernetes, right? Yep. Uh, on the cube, you're tracking Kubernetes, the growth of Kubernetes. You know, is this a real moment where IBM says, okay, now Kubernetes and OpenShift is now ready for the enterprise? Yeah, I, I, absolutely, absolutely. You know, if I think about kind of big moments in IT that provided ubiquitous, uh, ubiquitous access to developers, right? You had, we talked about Linux as an operating environment. Once all the platforms, the different architecture ran Linux, the ability for application portability while still bringing out the value of the platform became very much true. Java from an application programming model was another one, right? If you wrote in Java, you had the ability then to move that Java workload around without recompilation in many cases to different architectures getting the value out of where you chose. Containers are the next one. Right, so now we're containerizing uh, workload 
and again, you have sort of freedom of choice of where you run it, and if you run it in this cloud or that cloud or this system or that system, you get different values out and of it. And we're not just containerizing microservices, right? Now we're talking about containerizing you know, WebSphere. And, and, uh, WebSphere and, and databases and you know, message queuing and kind of that robust runtime that uh, you know, somebody in the audience joked, gosh, I haven't seen those queues in a long time, right? Not that they haven't been there, they've always been there, but again, this is back to how do you take what you have from a legacy IT and modernize it for this cloud era, much more than cloud washing. This is really you know, transforming the It preserves, the it preserves IT. investment. I mean, the bottom line, if I'm, a, if I'm a CIO or I'm an executive looking at this market, I say, okay, I got a purchase decision I've made in the past, right. and I have an install base of stuff, yep. and my, my choice was, used to be, okay, I got to replace that, right. hire new people, get, move everything over, to now, your approach is a little bit different. So, great, just containerize it, yep. and then when you're ready, you just do, right. you deal with it on its life cycle. That's right. So you That's don't right. really have, so it's an ROI thing, and it's also it preservation Absolutely. of pre-existing conditions. Yeah. Now the other big, of course, client transformation going on is there's not a single client on the planet who's not trying to figure out a, you know, artificial intelligence and what it means to their business to bring more, um, more insights around their client set into their workflows. Yeah. And so that's why, as you know, in addition to Watson and all the work we do around Watson, of course, in our cloud, we've gone down to the system level with our power platform and really optimized Power9 you know, with flash storage attached to it as the best combination of a platform for this AI era. In fact, I was sharing just before we went live here, right? It's actually a, a big announced day <laughs> for our systems business too. We're announcing new models of our AI platform, what we call the AC922, now with six GPUs. You know, with our partnership with NVIDIA, we've got new Linux systems, what, you know, kind of the fall on with Power9 that you know, I started back, they're much better by the way, right? That I started back in 2013. Yeah. So you know, here we are at the, the Linux Summit. We've got a common cloud partnership being announced. And at the same time, we're announcing all the way down to the metal systems and chips that are optimized to run, uh, run the Linux and, and open source uh, platforms. Yeah, and the thing that I, love, I like about this environment is the level of granularity yeah. is getting down to the point where you can have your applications or down to the level of service to a service level right, right. and manage it on that basis. And Power AI would be a great example of what It actually can tap connects into. it all together, right? I mean, Power AI, which again, new content there, we've just announced Power AI on Power 9 and on Red Hat for the first time. You know, back to new news here at the summit. And about, it'll be containerized later this year. So now you've got Power AI in a container on IBM Cloud Private, running on OpenShift, optimized for Power 9. Starts to make your brain hurt a little bit, right? But I mean, that's <laughs> sort of the level of the thoughtfulness of our strategy and how all the pieces hook together from the software and the applications down to the systems and the chip. You guys do a good job keeping it in the open too. I like, really like that, how that went with Power. Certainly yeah. great, great stuff. Power AI, for the folks who should check it out, it's from IBM. Um, interesting product, I think it's got a lot of capability. Yeah. Your perspective as an industry participant, you know, you, you've seen many waves. Right, right. What's this wave like in your opinion? Obviously there's so much going on with this new infrastructure. Yeah, right. How do you talk about it when someone says, hey Doug, what's going on with all this stuff? You got blockchain over here, you got this going on over there. Yeah. Uh, what's yeah, yeah I, I think the, the uh, at least from a systems perspective, the way I think about it and you know, myself and my peers think about it is, We've gone through so many generations where it was more manufacturing process driven innovation. You know, how do you pack more on a chip? How do you pack more on a chip? How do you pack more on a chip? And it was kind of all about that. We're now in an era where homogeneity is no longer going to cut it, right? You're going to really need, you know, a number of GPUs, a number of processors, different kind of architectures to fit the kind of workload that's coming so fast at us these days. You really don't have time to step back and say, no, no, let me replumb my whole data center with that that next one chip, right? It's going to be a diversity of infrastructure. You need, so you that, it's hard to provision, you need it available immediately. Right. So, so this wave we're in really is about bringing that, uh, that diversity, the heterogeneity back to the data center and, and bringing that value though back in a simplified deployment way because heterogeneity means complexity in some ways. And that's where the layering of you know, software packages like Power AI, like software defined storage, like ICP, and OpenShift with our partnership with Red Hat, kind of help bring that diversity and bring it back to a common level of application development. That's kind of the end goal. Common application development, the platform brings out the value, the app doesn't have to worry about it, but you've got that diversity of choice underneath. Great, Doug, great stuff. Great to have you on theCUBE. If you just end, end the segment, just briefly summarize for people watching, what's this relationship with Red Hat all about? What's the, yeah. what, obviously you have history, but what's the value? If you just talk about it right now, what's the impact to the customer watching, 
uh, the relationship that's announced here with the private cloud uh, initiative with Red Hat. Yeah, I think if we summarize the relationship without getting into the technology, it really is about bringing innovation to enterprise clients. At the end of the day, that's what Red Hat's focused on, that's what we're focused on, and that's what we're focused on together. They have great minds in the industry, we have great minds in the industry. The power of those minds coming together to create some of the innovation that we've just talked about here in this segment, I mean, it's mind blowing for what it means to enterprise clients to help them propel themselves forward and transform. That's and this, what it means. These are the kind of partnerships we're going to see now that people are rallying behind Kubernetes and containers right. and this new software defined infrastructure that's going on. We yep. expect more of it, right? We Absolutely. see more? Absolutely. It's right. uh, software defined is the name of the game these days, right? Not that there isn't value in the <laughs> systems, by the way. Still oh, the systems are under the hood. Systems are under the hood. They're under the, the hood. They're under so the hood and they're differentiated for sure. They have infrastructure as code. You still need servers to run this stuff on, so it great does, stuff. It does matter, it does matter a lot. Doug, great to see you. Good to see Looking you as good. always, John. John, good to see you. Absolutely. Hugh, yeah. bringing all the action here, here in San Francisco, live coverage. I'm John Furrier with John Troyer. Day one, we'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>